American disease stock here for Sclerotinia management. This is, these are, of course, this is our driving stock. Okay, and uh, for driving, the critical question here always is, when do you need that second fungicide application for Sclerotinia management? When can you get away with one? Okay, now, you're at the highest risk of Sclerotinia as you enter bloom when you have moist soils for a couple weeks going into bloom. And this is again because you think about the biology here. You have those rust resting structures in the soil. They have to form little mushrooms. As we all know, mushrooms like it moist, not like it dry. So if you have dry soil going into bloom, you're kind of low risk. Okay? And uh, you need some sustained soil moisture to get the mushrooms, to get the spores. Okay, so what we did here is we first off created conditions that were favorable for white mold going into bloom. All the way into R2 and five days after early R2, we were irrigating consistently. We were irrigating here to maintain consistent soil moisture for a good, uh, gosh, I think about three weeks before early R2. So sustained soil moisture. Very favorable for apothecia production. Accordingly, we did have apothecia at early bloom. And so then we went on at early, at early R2 growth stage, we put on fungicide apps. And, uh, and then we continued irrigating for another five days. And then we did, we supplied different irrigation treatments. Okay, and this one behind you, for a for full month after early R2, every three days, it got 0.45 inches of water. Whether it was by rainfall or irrigation. Mostly irrigation because we were pretty dry. Okay. And uh, what you'll see is that under that situation, which is of course extreme disease pressure, it's a no-brainer, you need two fungicide apps, okay? But that's just for reference, okay? The lighting is now pretty bad, so you can't see it as well. The front of this plot looks pretty good, but you go into here and it's pretty, pretty badly diseased. This is your control. Okay, you go over here. These are two fungicide apps on these dates, okay? And this is Endura at 8 ounces, each app. Okay, uh, this is the low rate within the labeled rate on dry beans. It looks beautiful. Okay, I see a couple diseased plants, but it really looks beautiful. And given how high disease pressure in here it was, that just speaks a lot to the efficacy there. Now we go down to one, one application, and this looks marginally better than control, but not much. Okay, so no brainer. One app isn't good enough if you have really dis high disease pressure. That's obvious, but you need this for reference, okay? So now we're going to move on to the next plot, which has a different frequency of irrigation. So in this plot here, this got the exact same amount of water total over the entire season as that treatment. But the difference is, okay, we irrigated to maintain moist soils into early bloom, and then five days thereafter, all the way to August 28th, just like over there, identical. And there, from there, this got, instead of 0.45 inches every three days, this got 0.9 inches every six days. And the irrigation was applied over a 24-hour window so that we maintained uh, canopy moisture exactly the same over those 24 hours here as 24 hours of irrigation there. Okay, except there it got half the water over those 24 hours. Okay, now what you'll see here is that your control, these are 10, this is 10 feet wide, this is at 28 inch rows, here we have 14 inch rows, your control looks awful. About the same as over there. Okay, this is one fungicide app at early bloom. What you'll see is that in your 28 inch rows, you're getting to the point that that actually looks marginally okay. Okay, 14 inch rows, definitely not. Okay, and uh, here, no brainer still, you still need those two apps. It looks beautiful here, the two apps. Okay, 10 feet wide, right across here. Go on to the next block here. Now you have irrigation every nine days. And now you'll see we're getting to the point where you can get away with one, one app. This got irrigated intensively from about July, I think July 6th, maybe it was 8th, I think it was July 6th, all the way through July 28th, just like the other ones. Maintain moist soil, favor for apothecia. And then, after July 28th, 1.35 inches of irrigation every nine days. What's happening there is that if that's applied over a 24 hour window again. Same as those. Actually, it was 25 and a half hours across everything, okay? Now, um, but same as over there. Okay, but the difference here is that the soil really dried out between shots of water and, uh, 
and the other the other important thing is is you have fewer windows where that canopy is moist. Okay. Uh, same water overall. Okay. And look at your control. You have plenty of disease in here, but my gosh, it looks better than over there. Okay. Markedly better. Okay. Now you have a single fungicide app, and you know what? This looks pretty pretty good pretty decent. There's disease in there, but it looks pretty decent. Two fungicide apps. Yes, it still looks better, but now it's not so marked. And I'm not sure at this point that that second fung fungicide app, app is going to be economical. Okay, because you got to make up the money. Eight ounces in Dura, you're talking what, 27, 28 bucks, somewhere in there? And for just the product per acre? Okay, and uh, so you got to make up that money. And so the question will be in the yield. Okay, how's the yield come out? But it's not so important here that this happened to be every nine days. The real take home here is that as you evaluate whether you need that second fungicide application, you need to be thinking about how often that canopy is, is uh, getting sustained moisture in that canopy in that critical month after uh, the dry beans enter bloom, okay, after the early R2. How often is it happening? And is that soil drying out in between rain sh rainfall shots? If your soil is really drying out between shots of rainfall, a lot of your apothecia are dying. You have a lot less spore production. You also have, if you only have a few windows, maybe you got, you got two weeks of dry weather and then it rains three inches. Okay, but, it, but then it's 10, 10 days of dry weather. You got three inches of water, sure. But you only had that one window where the canopy had the sustained moisture. Okay, and that's two weeks before that, a lot of your epithecia died. Okay, so what you want to be thinking about here is how often is your canopy moist? Okay, and if you're an irrigator, the implications are obvious. But really, I'm really thinking about this from a dry land perspective as well. Okay, because let's face it, a lot of these decisions are an art form. <laughs> There's no hard and fast rule. You use your best gut sense, and you use all of the information available to you. And the idea here is to develop better information for you so your gut sense gets better, right? And so uh, that's what we're doing here.